democracy and the capital of the Shun Empire was a port city with over a million residents. It was a place that reflected the open-minded values of the empire on its streets. Women dressed as men or men dressed up fancifully the city couldn't be more luxurious or more crowded but just like any other crowded place many stories appeared and disappeared. In these streets the story of the little bird that grants the wishes of the listener with a strange song was also one of them. It was said that one's dreams come true while listening to the song in a pharmacy song going wrong there. Owner instructs a customer that the goddess will come once they sleep but that they will only be able to hear the song once soon the goddess enters the bed chambers she approaches the customer and finds guard standing near his bed she stares at one of the men making the rest question if she has figured out his true identity the goddess starts singing the man notices how beautiful she is becoming lost in her voice just then the customer wakes up pushing back the man's thoughts the woman asks the customer if he dreamed well and then excuses herself she then remarks that the man's eyes are one of a kind and she leaves four days later the goddess is wandering around the forest ravenously she wonders if she has to pass the night with hallucinatory grass again if she had just died things might have been better but she remembers how her mother made her promise to live even after she died if it weren't for that she would have died alongside her she collapses to the floor and finds a goblin staring at her his eyes seem Similar to those of the man she saw last week he notices the herbs in her hands realizes she's drunk on the herb and states that she committed a crime she tells him that it's all she has eaten in the past four days she says Mr. Goblin isn't supposed to be here and that she can't use her voice unless she's singing. He extends his hand toward her face making her flinch he rustles her hair assuring her he won't hit her he quickly embraces her saying that not only is she not afraid of goblins but she does not even have a name of her own he then asks her if she has a man she holds dear in her heart to which she says she doesn't have a name or a man the man then asks what she thinks of a goblin surprising her he asks her to become a goblin's bride the scene switches to the man his royal highness reaching the pharmacy and demanding song Goinrian bring his daughter he addresses Goinrian as his father-in-law noticing the red mask he immediately recognizes the man as a warmonger and king of chin who was rumored to drink blood and feed on flesh say Ian Young he's the emperor's left-hand man and an investigation officer that all officials fear on top of that he's the fourth imperial prince and the devil king is the crown prince's only brother sharing the same mother as him initially Gunrian thinks he on young is talking about his wife and thinks she cheated on her but when he confronts her he finds it was his daughter he then guides the prince toward her shabby room meanwhile the goddess lay on the floor thinking of how the man told her he would get her before the day passed she thought of him as a hallucination but it still felt nice the door slams open revealing the king goblin she met she Instantly turns happy he on young informs her he's come to take her home as the bride generally moves to her husband's home after marriage. Her eyes widen in shock and she smiles sadly she tells him she is not allowed to go anywhere she clenches her shabby dress not wanting the kind goblin to be scolded by her further as well he on young then turns to her father and asks his permission making the goddess tremble in fear Gonryong curses at his daughter angering the prince he turns back to the goddess and reminds her of her promise to marry him she starts crying and agrees to be his bride the scene switches to the woman finally gaining consciousness and finding herself in a bathtub the goblin king is by her side she asks who he is and where she is the goblin king asks if she doesn't remember he then reminds her of who he is and that she is going to marry him he explains to her how consuming two leaves is illegal and that places with them must be burned she immediately remembers that her mother's grave is there and pleads with the goblin not to burn the place he clarifies that he didn't mean to burn that place and promises her he wouldn't she starts crying apologizing for looking ugly while crying he assures her she's the most beautiful woman he knows making the goddess question his eyesight but when she asks him about it he says he doesn't have weak eyesight confusing her more he feeds her rice causing her eyes to sparkle in delight she asks him to taste it and he does but in his own way the goddess looks at him in surprise wondering if he will be disappointed if she says he did something wrong she grabs the washcloth from him saying she can wash on her own he asks if she's uncomfortable too 
which she says it's not but he seems not used to doing this he confessed that this was his first time being so attracted to a woman wanting to repay his kindness she asks if he wants her to sing a song but the prince asks her for a kiss to which she agrees wanting to please him suddenly a voice announces that court lady yun wishes to see he on young there prince turns to leave telling her he will be right back but she quickly grabs his robe and hesitates to speak the prince senses what she wants and asks if she wants to come with him she eagerly nods and asks if it's possible the prince wraps a robe around her figure and agrees he picks her up to which she says she must be heavy but he disagrees saying she's excessively light he on young walks out and spots yun bowing yun gazes at him and the woman in his arms it was quite odd to see his highnesses with a woman by his side when it was heard he had a concubine last night it must have made her highness the empress dowager pleased for sure however the woman yun is seeing right now is a stranger she can't believe the woman came out calmly in a man's arms like that it makes her question the woman's character the goblin prince announces that this lady will be his bride shocking yun she apologizes and says he can't marry a woman who has not been approved by the empress hearing this the prince coldly glares at lady yun and informs her that he will visit the empress in the afternoon asking her to leave she tries to protest but he inquires how much longer he will have to talk to a lowly servant and for the sake of their long history he's being patient lady yun flinches as she realizes what he meant she had betrayed him back then the prince tightens his grasp making the woman giggle he apologizes and turns away telling Yun that he plans on marrying quickly the woman, asks him if her father really agreed to this marriage this makes Yun grit her teeth in annoyance thinking she must be a half-wit her head starts to throb badly as she wonders where the woman came from he on young informs her that he can't help her dress up and points to the maid saying they will serve her a maid bows to her with respect and introduces herself as soy seeing her nervous expression he on young assures her that he will stay with her soya takes a better look at her face she notices no scars on her face and that she has fair skin she looked better than soya thought however she is too thin she makes a mental note to make sure she gains weight for the time being soya starts dressing her up and fussing all over her she then shows her a mirror and she finds herself quite changed she comments that it's weird he on young leans toward her and says it's not as though everything looks good on her she tries taking off his mask but he quickly grabs her hand refusing to do so this confuses her and she asks why he on young asks if by any chance he's embarrassed by his face he on young turns his head away and says he's not but he's just ugly this confuses her at first but she then starts laughing she asks him not to say that and just take it off he protests that she will laugh at him but she promises not to however he on young shakes his head saying it's still early and after they have spent a night together she can't take it off but she pays no heed to his words and swishes the mask off his face she smiles saying they will spend it right now and he can take it off now he on young couldn't understand the ways of human intimacy and the meaning behind them but after today he does understand the sweetness of it the heat and how it drives one crazy he asks her if she even understands the meaning of tonight but she only stares at him seeing his beautiful face she wonders if he's a woman when he denies it she says she has never seen such a beautiful man and none of the people she met had a face like his he on young shyly turns his face away but she softly touches it commenting that he's so pretty she continues that his eyes remind her of a summer night sky with a bird flying over she has never seen a flower with a color like his eyes he embraces her it was his first night with a woman he fell for at first sight no matter how patient he is he can no longer endure it later that night the woman opens her eyes as she sits up she feels a throbbing pain she looks sideways and finds it empty she wonders where he went she had thought he would be here with her the thought makes her face droop she brushes his side of the bed and remarks that he wouldn't stay with a nobody she looks up in a daze saying he is really a beautiful person he is certainly a man but even his face looks ladylike she looks around wondering where he is she then remembers her father and starts trembling not wanting to go back she didn't want a kind man like keon young to be caught by someone as cruel as her father or he would crumble without mercy she walks out of bed knowing she needs to tell him she realizes she's still wearing her night suit and knows she can't go out like this she peeks around the room and finds it simple yet 
luxurious she drapes the blanket over her she, has been to many rich mansions before to sing for them but she has never seen one this big she, stares outside in amazement seeing that the man lives in such a house she wonders if he has a wife she, wonders why he would want her then maybe as his mistress she mumbles as if it would make her, a lowly woman too a lowly woman is what the madam called her mother she hit her because, she hated her mother and her father overlooked that but he didn't want her mother to get hurt not, that he ever visited her it was a weird relationship where no one was happy if all that was, caused by one lowly woman she didn't want to be that woman she walks out wondering what to, do she debates whether the wedding can be called off later he on young, finds the bed chamber empty the maids trembled in fear apologizing profusely she had run away with nothing but a silk cloth covering her, and without shoes she wonders how urgently she ran away when, she saw the chance he orders her to light up the area as she couldn't have gone far he wonders where, she is he remembers how she enjoyed their intimate moments but what on earth, would make her run away with only a blanket his head throbbed as he wondered when the last, time he got this angry was he finally remembers it was when he was betrayed by people, for the first time it was then that he decided that he would never be betrayed again the woman was, the first one he had opened up to since then he, realizes he shouldn't have trusted her either but he couldn't even think like that about her at all, just felt like a dream in the flow of time where, moments and forever intertwined all sense of reality broke down for him it was like he was floating in, the air as if possessed by a strange spell he firmly vows to never let her run away again, he is cut off from his thoughts as he hears a piercing, scream he runs toward it and finds his, wife trembling the guard informs him that she is sleeping there and when he tried to wake her to, bring her inside she screamed and threw rocks at him, he on young glances at her wondering if she was resisting being taken away while running but, Seeing her trembling sacredly he realized as it isn't true she just felt threatened and put up a, fight a desperate one at, that he gestures for the guards to step back and kneel in front of her she flinches yelling at him not, to come near her he leans toward her and she immediately, recognizes him as the goblin king she immediately embraces him still trembling she asks if he was with madam, confusing him she asks if he has a wife to which he lifts the blanket over her and says she's his wife she clings to him saying, she's not her because she's a lowly woman he becomes angry and asks her who dares call her, like that she tells him the madam called her mother that her mother was crying that madam was, always angry and she was beaten up she confesses that she doesn't want that and wants to, call off the wedding he on young tells her the wedding can't be called off he shakes his head saying, she should be responsible for a king after being intimate with him it's enough to kill her family and relatives and the mountain where her mother is buried will be burned down to her. Eyes widen at this and she tries to protest he on, young interrupts and says everything will be fine if she becomes his bride she asks if he has a wife to which he, says he has no one but her he then takes her inside she then asks why he, doesn't have a wife as anyone living in such a house has three or four wives he on young tells her that all he needs, is her the maid soon brought water to clean her feet he on young, sends them back and starts washing her feet himself he asks if she knows who he is he tells her he's the prince, the king's only brother and she's going to be his princess this confuses her at first but when he, on young tells her that she will become a madam her eyes light up in delight he on, Young notices how she didn't even budge about being a princess but she's surprised to become, a madam he smiles at her innocence a woman who doesn't know what a king is was quite amusing he kisses her, feet saying only she can become a madam they embraced each other again that night when he on, Young calls them a couple the woman wonders what it means she remembers the time she was, trapped in that mountain the couple she saw was when she, went to the main house however the husband never talked as sweetly to her as he on young did in there, midst the woman remarks that she remembers him from when they first met he had put on black, clothes after her mother passed away all she thought about was how to avoid the guards eyes and run away from the cursed mountain she was trapped in on the rare days she was dragged out of, that mountain those were the only days she could fill her stomach on days like that her father introduced, her as an oracle and had her sing for strangers she covered her face with silk put on fancy clothes, and put a weird golden tiara on her head and she sang a slow song that seemed to last forever, all night long until her throat went sore after she was done, 
she was dragged back and trapped in the mountain a life that would never change and into shackles. She would never get out of all she could think about in that state was death but then she met him she was cleaned like usual and dressed up fancifully she remembers how she hated wearing such heavy dresses and jewelry when she met his peculiar crimson eyes absorbing all the animosities she became astounded his pupils were warm like a summer night how could he have such warm eyes while storing others bad wills for her his eyes were strong and beautiful and she would never get Tired of watching them she asks him if she was right to which he agrees since she still calls him Mr. Goblin he asks her to call him Sai On Young when she repeats his name, his heart melts at her voice the scene switches to He On Young asking why she was there last night she explains that she was looking for Sir, Sai On Young but couldn't walk this surprises He On Young and he suggests taking her to the doctor, she has taken a bagging saying she has never seen a doctor He On Young. Wonders why she never saw a doctor while getting all those scars he has cut off from his thoughts, as she places a rose petal on his robe calling him pretty like a moonstruck, flower he on young chuckles saying she uses many romantic expressions she promises to show him flowers in the moonlight, when they go to the mountain she suddenly turns gloomy noticing, this he on young asks if something's wrong she confesses that his place is nice but when she goes, back it won't be like this she wonders how she will live this time the mountain was such a lonely place she can stand being hungry but being lonely is a pain similar to a knife blade she is jolted out of her thoughts as he on young asks if she will abandon him after promising to marry him she starts to panic and clarifies that it's not like that it's just that if her father finds out he will get rid of her mother's grave otherwise she would never leave him as he's the person she likes most in the world her words make Hyun Young's smile fondly he then assures her that they will move her mother and hold a funeral together and in that way she won't have to meet her further or other family members again with this her eyes sparkle gleefully another issue clicks in her mind and she asks what if her father hits Hyun Young he assures her that if she stays, here he will be fine the scene shifts to the doctor informing he on young that the princess is very weak since she overexerted herself, relying on hallucinogens she won't be able to walk well or see well at night he on young, firmly says he will carry her in his arms or have men carry her in a carriage the doctor then starts telling him about her womb making he on young flinch he coldly states that he didn't order him to look into such deep issues the doctor protests that he was just worried since it was, his first wife he on young glares at him saying that whether she can have a baby or not, is none of his business making the doctor tremble he then approaches Sawyer and tells her that, his wife doesn't know the ways of the world well so, how could her precious feet touch the ground Sawyer bows in agreement assuring him, she will attend to her to the best of her abilities he then walks toward his wife's room wondering what she is doing so informs him that she's grooming herself soon enough she happily runs toward Heon, young addressing him as your highness but staggers Heon young lectures her not to run as she has weak legs he then leans toward her and asks who told her to say your highness she says it was the maids as they were surprised when she called him mr sai on young Heon. Young tells her to call him by his name as he likes it her lips calling out his name sounded dreamy to Sai on Young just like her songs and he wanted to hear her call that name over and over again as he carries her in his arms he asks if she really doesn't have a name she nods in agreement he on Young asks what her mother used to call her to which she says she called her baby he tells her that they will have to give her a name if she wants to be in his family she protests that a name is usually given by ones further to which he explains that a name can be given by a guardian and since he's her guardian now he can name her this causes her to turn happy seeing her peachy cheeks he on young thinks about how pretty she is her body smelled faintly of flowers and he can't wait to hold her in his arms again he lays her back on the ground and says her name will be song young young the name means eternal flower petals young young muffles her name at first and then loudly yet happily calls her name out she continues saying it making he on young's heart pound loudly and dazzle the servants around them he asks her to stop as her name is supposed to be called by others he then addresses her by her name and asks if she at twirl the feeling of someone calling her by her name was overwhelming she replies that the doctor asked he 
to eat well she then tells him her doctor has changed and it wasn't the grandpa of the other day he informs her that the doctor has been through something bad and is dead this causes young young's eyes to widen and she asks if someone has a grudge against him he on young asks her what she thinks to which she says she didn't see death if he was supposed to die this soon she would have surely seen it hearing this shocks he on young he asks if she can see death to which she shudderingly agrees but she says she can't see if the cause is murder she then hesitatingly asks if he's uncomfortable hearing this since everybody hates her because of Emmett he on young's eyes widen and he swiftly says he will never hate her he immediately removes the mask and swears that he will never hate his bride or something like that he's a man who fell in love at first sight and to hate her for this didn't even cross his mind on the day of that foggy drizzle he met this woman, and fell into a trap it was so sweet as if made of honey but it was a trap after all when he couldn't, escape she asks if he fell in love at first sight which he confirms he then kisses her saying he, knew it at first sight as he embraced her court lady Yoon stood outside their chambers she, knows there are already several rumors about how, much the Goblin King cares about his woman bringing her in the middle of the night like loot, and trying to marry her without the Empress knowing it was all too absurd for her to take soon he on young exits and approaches Yoon he asks what, it is to which she informs him that the Empress wants him and his wife to meet her right now, he on young bursts into laughter he states, that he should be a good son and listen to his mother he picks up a sleeping young young in his arms to which Yoon asks if he really plans on going like this he on young asks mockingly how can he disobey his mother she asks if his princess plans on waking up to which he tells her that his wife is weak naturally so she won't be able to handle the poisonous palace Yoon states that he heard, she was the one who could make wishes come true and states that the empress wants her to grant. A wish he on young hugs young young tighter and says he knows he on young finally reaches his mother's palace and greets her he asks her not to wake young young up as he forced himself to bring someone who wasn't feeling well the empress asks if he has started being neglectful to his wife after getting a woman he on young says he has so far not disobeyed any of her orders the empress says he didn't show his wife at all not less than wedding preparations and adding her name to the family Tree High on Young says there is no need for her to look into that as the wedding ceremony will be held according to the customs and the name will be added to the family. Tree the Empress stares at the sleeping woman and says she is against this she asks him how he could bring a woman without any background to his palace. He on Young tells her she's a woman he fell for at first sight there hasn't been a moment when he couldn't think about her the Empress explains to him that that's how men and women usually are and reminds him that it's his first time meeting a woman outside after growing up he on young glares at his mother and asks her not to call his bride cheap as she isn't of a lowly background he reminds her that his father always told him to bring any woman he like the empress grits her teeth in anger wondering why he was being like this she tells him the king meant for him to choose someone from the nobles he on young reminded her that it was exactly how many countless lives disappeared he states that he do s need a noble lady the empress tries to reason with him but he turns away announcing his leave the empress stops him and asks when her wish will come true he on young pauses for a while and then says it will be after he gets married later young young wakes up from her deep slumber and finds herself in he on young's arms they were traveling in a carriage she wonders if she's going home and starts to panic wondering if she did something wrong noticing this he on young asks what's wrong he asks asks the coachman to hurry up young reaches for his face wondering if she will ever see him again he on young grabs her hand saying he can't take off his mask here she protests that they will part when they arrive confusing he on young tearfully asks him to show her his face he on young wonders why she is still so scared even after he has held her in his arms all this time he drapes a large cloak over them and removes his mask he then asks her to tell him what's wrong to which she asks if she will never be able to see him a guy and he asks why she would say that to which she says he's sending her back home he on young assures her that she's never going back to that place again he informs her that her mother is already in the temple and they will go tomorrow to give her a proper funeral young young becomes satisfied and calms down he on young chuckles and asks if she made that face because she didn't want to break up with him he then pulls her toward him asking if she doesn't want them to break up but wants to stay with him forever she 
shyly agrees saying she would love to the next day in Horianza Temple Young Young and Hyun Young held her mother's funeral properly crowds of people surrounded them and watched them perform the rituals they talked about how the king came with his commoner wife whom he really treasures they all watched them drive away in a carriage Young Young sighs he on Young thanks her for her hard work and the massages her weak legs he says she has worked hard today for someone with weak legs she knelt bowed and stood for a long time and then he embraces her again the scene shifts to the maids showing young young all sorts of precious and expensive jewels that he on young prepared for her she comments that they are pretty and leaves showing no further interest in them the maids look at her in confusion their princess doesn't seem interested in things like this and barely looks at them the next day young young watches he on young sleep she pats his hair calling him pretty she hung a song for him awakening him and he hugs her after teasing her for a bit young young soon falls asleep he kisses her on the forehead and leaves to make wedding preparations the scene switches to the wedding young young walks toward the aisle where he on young is already present she takes his hand and gets married later she sighs in relief her legs were wobbling badly she tells he on young that her head feels heavy to which he tells her it's because of her hairpiece he makes her lean on him to ease her pain and asks if it's Better she agrees he on young a shows her that it will be over soon all that's left is for them to visit his parents at the royal palace young young asks if his parents are the emperor and the empress she excitedly states that the emperor is a person who is ten steps higher than the lord her cute words make he on young chuckle in amusement young tells him it's her first time meeting such a great person hearing this he on young remembers something he tells her that his father went to another palace to heal himself so she will only greet his mother today and also there, Crown Prince Young Young felt drowsy and stated that the wedding ceremonies are as difficult as, ancestral rites he on Young tells her that he has something to say seeing, that she did not reply he looks toward her and finds her fast asleep he states that it's important or she will be, surprised if they run into each other without a word first in the wedding. Dress made of fine and precious silk a memory is intertwined the memory is still clear in front of Hyun Young's eyes he smiles as he stares at Young Young's sleeping figure he caresses her and says his morning was perfect as he woke up to the song of his beautiful bride he wonders if that calm day will continue or if Young Young will also get scared of her later they approach the imperial palace and greet the empress Young Young introduces herself Hurriedly to the Empress the Empress asks her to raise her, head Young sees the Empress's face and is amazed by her beauty she becomes pleased as no matter, how she looked at it she was indeed he on Young's mother the Empress, flaps her fan and asks if she's a woman with unique taste this confuses Young Young soon the crown, Prince approaches from behind telling his mother that it's an auspicious day because it's he on Young's wedding he suggests holding a banquet he then turns to Young Young and states that he's the woman behind the rumor he welcomes her making Young Young look up at him the idea of two people born with the same face seemed quite odd to he on Young everyone is different and must have a different face he was born as a goblin pretending to be a human inside a human's womb a goblin was born along with a human he should have been killed as soon as he was born but a benevolent mother was unable to do that and so he became a goblin he remembers his first queen someone he didn't know whom he married, at the empress's order the former queen excused, herself saying she had medicine to take and politely asked him to bring it for her it was an aborticide medicine he on young, doesn't even remember her face all he remembers, are her two feet motionlessly hanging however young young's face is already engraved in his memory even if he dies. Someday his distant spirit will wander around looking for her face he could never let her go or forget her and so he has no choice but to meddle he is cut off from his thoughts as young young remarks that the crown prince looks just like him the thought of her saying he didn't look like him but rather the crown prince did surprises him she then cheekily whispers that her he on young is prettier he on young swiftly picks her up and hugs her tightly she has transformed him from a goblin into a human being the empress, becomes infuriated and shouts at he on young he explains that his wife's, legs are weak to which the empress states that she could get help from the servants for that he asks if, they are more reliable than him to which the empress continues to order him, to put her down however he announces his departure the crown prince watches the scene unfold, he warns Hyun Young to get on the right track he knew he should have slid his, 
chest he should have neutered him instead he asks Hyun Young to stop and asks him to join them, for the banquet Hyun Young refuses to do so angering the Prince Young Young, watches this and notices that Hyun Young isn't his usual self it must be because of his brother, she notices that he sits on a high throne and pretends to smile as she looks at him, closely she realizes they don't look alike at all her Hyun Young doesn't smile like that even under. A mask the crown prince orders Hyun Young to rest in the palace for a while as he, will have to eventually come back he mocks Hyun Young as an animal without an owner, however Hyun Young doesn't care whether he's called a goblin or an animal she has, never been treated as a human being anyway for him Hyun Young Young's sweet voice is enough, as Hyun Young, Young stares at the castle she senses a familiar smell the smell of loneliness. He on Young asks her to bear with it even if it's not a great place and he assures her, that they will never have to come back after the banquet they sit on the stairs and he on Young, removes her shoes he remarks that she must have had a long day however, Young Young is lost in her own thoughts and states that he doesn't look like the crown prince he disagrees, saying they do look alike but that's a secret she then asks if he's wearing a mask because he looks like him making him flinch he asks young young if she knows about the story, of the goblin's egg he tells her that a female lays eggs but it's very difficult, for them to hatch as the male goblin eats the eggs this shocks young young and she asks why he eats the egg with its child in it he on young explains that is how the story goes so the female goblin, hides her egg inside a human's womb away from the female then the unsuspecting human raises their child with a goblin spawn their faces are the same making it impossible to tell which child is which and that's why he's a goblin she then asks if they could just be twins he on young replies that there aren't twins in the royal family he then asks young young softly if she's okay with her husband being a goblin young young flashes a big smile at him and says she is she was alone in the mountain with no one to talk to waiting for death but then he on young came as a miracle to her and saved her she then states that her blood is red and asks if it's okay this makes him chuckle and he says it's fine later that night they walk into the imperial party hall and find several people inside uproar fills the hall as they enter even though he on young hated these gazes today he seemed to be fine with them as she was next to him as they become seated at their table he on young offers her liquor to feel better but young young is lost in her own thoughts he on young asks who she's looking at to which she says everyone he on young asks her to only look at him since he's a jealous man however she didn't know what it meant so he explained to her that it's something that makes one want to check what color of the blood of everyone looking at her is she stares at him in confusion and asks if it's seeing if one has goblin or human blood he laughs saying it's similar she then asks what color of blood he has he then bites his fingertip and blood oozes out startling young young she then bites her own finger and presses her wound against his saying it's the same color he on young asks her not to do something like this again as it isn't worth it she argues that he did it too and if he doesn't do it she won't as well he agrees and promises not to do it again he then kisses her wound infuriating the crown prince who rises from his seat immediately seeing his furious expression makes young young shiver in fear he on young immediately turns her face t o ord him and reminds her that she is supposed to look only at him the crown prince calls for him again but he ignores him he again asks young young not to look anywhere else to which she agrees he remembers how the crown prince always said that a goblin needed to wear a mask and even put spies near him to check but since he has provoked him in this palace of course he'd be mad he stands up and the crown prince reminds him that he's still a member of the imperial family no matter how beastly he is and that there are rules to follow he on young calmly states that it's his first time getting married after becoming an adult he asks if he expects him to be a saint and not a beast this infuriates the crown prince more than ever however the rest of the people burst into laughter scared young young tells he on young that she wants to go back as this place is weird he immediately lifts her and announces his departure the crown prince grits his teeth in anger he on young knew that the crown 
prince has a very cruel natter. E. Despite looking benevolent he was sure he would love to whip someone and he wonders who else will die tonight at his hands. The scene shifts to Young Young and He on Young in their bed chamber. He on Young says he heard she's turning 26 this year. He shows her a special drink that is as old as both their ages combined. He pours some for her and hands it to her warning her that it might be too strong for her but since it's the imperial family's tradition she has to drink it. Young Young takes a sip and soon starts coughing from the bitter taste before she could puke it out. He on Young immediately kissed her making her gulp it down her throat. He apologizes for the bitter taste and says it was his first time drinking it too. It's a drink prepared specifically for a couple in the bridal room. The first queen consort hung herself before they even shared alcohol. She asks why he drank it like it was nothing to which he responds that he can even swallow fire for her sake. Hearing this she protests telling him not to do that, or he will be burned he makes her promise to stay by his side forever to which she agrees thus he promises to never swallow the fire they then spend the night together the next morning he on young is informed that the empress's head may tune is here he wears his mask and asks soy what the prince did last night she informs him that he killed someone he on young wasn't surprised in the slightest the crown prince was cruel from childhood he liked seeing blood so he tormented small birds and animals then when he grew up he tormented people their father was always worried about it when rumors about his cruelty spread someone had to put an end to them that's when Hyun Young was called back to the capital and became the head of the inspection department he became the crown prince's mightiest sword and started controlling the government from the dark in the prince's stead that's how one became the light of government while the other became its darkness he approaches Yoon who informs him that the Empress has ordered T.H.E. Princess to keep to the palace rules about meeting her parents-in-law. It seemed absurd for him to wake someone who had just fallen asleep and go through a tedious ritual this early. He asks Yoon to tell his mother that since he's a tedious beast keeping human rules would be too hard for him. Yoon tries to protest but to no avail since he was defined as a goblin by his parents even. Though he has no magic or horns he vows to be a goblin till the day he dies although it's like living on a thin thread he can bear with it but if they included Young Young in it all hell would break loose the scene shifts to Goinry and being led by Soy toward the palace she reminds him to contact her beforehand before coming to meet the royals but since the princess has agreed to meet him she leads him to her gunnery and groans in annoyance he didn't want to be here but he could leave her like this since she knows that he grows and sells the hallucinids he knows he has to silence her before she opens her mouth young young hesitatingly walks toward her father the man alongside gonry and gasps she was nearly an animal but to think she was being treated so nicely was shocking he requests privacy as it's been so long since he saw his daughter he glares at her making her flinch in fear she notices the man with her father and remembers how he used to torture her she wants to do nothing but run Away seeing her tremble saw, Ye smiles at her she places her hands on Young Young's face and tells Gonryang that all the maids attend to the princess and know the scars on her body she then glares at the old man and says he met her privately in his dreams making Gonryang gasp he shouts saying he's her father and demands to see her in private just then he on Young approaches the commotion and remarks that he didn't know how great her father was Young Young immediately hugs him he reminds her that she promised not to meet her family she clarifies that they came to see her and were wondering if they had something to tell her he assures her he will listen to her family's words in her stead and asks her to go in gonry and watches the scene unfold and notices that the goblin king is treating his daughter like a precious treasure and he wonders if it will work in her favor however before he could say anything he on young coldly warned him not to step foot here again he then leaves he asks soy who the man with gunry was so informs him that he's his son-in-law who accompanied him here he on young ponders over how young young can't even understand what she went through he wonders what in the world has happened to her to the point that it is terrified her he orders the guard to prepare the underground prison the scene switches to some people gathered around the destroyed pharmacy and wondering what happened to it some inform the others that an inspection team swept through the area and that song's family was taken away after being caught growing drug plants he on young doesn't know exactly what she's 
been through he had thought of listening to her story but he didn't want to remind her of the pain she endured he is suddenly cut off from his thoughts as he smells blood it seemed amusing to him as he had never felt this way before even after killing thousands he vows to rip the people who caused young young pain to shreds but he wonders what this feeling is it's not like blindly swinging his sword or running out in rage and burning the world to the G. Round it's a cold chilling sorrowful wrath he doesn't want to show this side of himself to his wife and he just wants to be a kind lover to her but he doesn't know how to handle this emotion meanwhile Young sits in her room worriedly when he on Young enters she immediately hugs him and asks why he didn't come last night he tells her that he has some work to do she confesses that she thought he was having a hard time her father is a scary man and she was worried he would be beaten up or in trouble she waited all night for him praying desperately for him to come back safe and alive she starts crying making Heon Young wonder what the hell happened to her what did such a lovely person go through to the point she became this frightened as he embraces her he wonders if the man from before harassed her the hatred he felt just now consumes his being he wonders what to do with his conflicted mind he was annoyed at himself for being ignorant all the time she cried it felt as if it was his fault that she couldn't see or w al quell he should have known she'd be somewhere how could he not know seeing his troubled expression young young asks what the bad incident was that happened last night he says it's too ugly to tell her but deep down he knows he doesn't have anywhere else to pour out of this emotion so even if he knows it's cowardly he will dig deeper into her embrace throw a tantrum and enjoy her hug the scene shifts to an injured man in a cell he pleads with he on young to spare him as he didn't even lay a finger on young young but this makes him even more angry he states that young young was so scared to even sleep that he would be in front of her eyes when she woke up so she never slept properly the man continues to plead but he on young ignores him he orders general zoo to show them his wrath so that they will haunt the earth even after their deaths three days later the entire song family was wiped out the next day yun informs he on young that the empress has ordered him to keep his promise she then apologizes for the next words she will say and says that the empress has been patient she pleads with him not to let the noble's mercy be in vain he on young stares at her and points out that she speaks this word a lot as if he is not noble he remembers how he was beaten by the crown prince for taking off his mask and how he stabbed him but was it a seven-year-old kid who gave into the summer heat and took off his mask for a bit an incident happened due to the court lady Yun Tell. Ling the crown prince about it his nanny whom he thought of as his mother was the first traitor in his life in the present moment he on young glares at Yun and asks how dare a lowly servant bring up the royal mercy to mock him he decides to spare her worthless life seeing his cold expression shocks Yun she raised him like her own child people called him a goblin or the goblin king but she was always proud of the moon king but she could not disobey the crown prince's order other than that she has always done her best for him it was only once just once he on young informs yoon that his bride will visit tomorrow and asks her to get out the next day young young and he on young get ready to meet the empress he instructs her to address the empress as mother and all she wants is a song young young is delighted and agrees he then promises to take her out to eat delicious food he then picks her up saying they will light up lanterns together and eat delicious food he on young had a feeling everything would go well today they soon arrive young young looks around and states that this place smells like death he asks her to go inside and come back soon she asks if they aren't going in together to which he says he has something to take care of first she knows she can't hold him back but she really hates this place as well as his mother and brother but she forces a smile and bids him goodbye she felt quite strange something ominous was whispering in her mind no matter how hard she tried she couldn't seem to hear what it was she soon greets the empress who questions her song rumors soon the empress falls asleep and young young sings however the empress wakes up screaming angrily she starts whipping young young cruelly saying she lied as that thing can't be her child as she gets beaten up to death young young wonders why he on young left her in a place like this she then realizes that he must not have known this would have happened she decides to just try breathing consoling herself that everything will be 
fine after this and she will. I'll meet Heon Young again and this would become something that never happened later that night. Heon Young is informed that Young Young still hasn't returned. He starts to panic but the servants try to stop him. Sawyer reminds him that it will be considered treason and that the entire palace will be executed. He starts remembering what kind of expression Young Young had on before leaving. He knows the people in the Imperial Palace are cruel. That place doesn't suit Young. Why did he ever leave her there all alone? He already he knew he shouldn't have let her go he is afraid of what might happen if she does something wrong he prayed to God for her safety as tears streamed down his cheeks a mysterious little bird who sings songs that grant wishes no matter what the wish may be the truth will be given to those who want it even if the truth is far from what they desire the Empress continues to whip young young she confesses that the only reason she raised he on young was because her mind was weak not because that child was hers s. He orders Young Young to sing again wanting to know who put the goblin egg in her stomach seeing the Empress on the verge of insanity Young Young wonders why she's refusing to be he on Young's mother a beautiful man the one who saved her and somewhat lonely how could the Empress refuse to be his mother Young knows he needs to be embraced some days but no matter how much she hugged him it wasn't enough she thinks that somewhere in his soul he was still cold and lonely maybe if there had been someone to hug him when he was a child he wouldn't have been that lonely she is cut off from her thoughts as the Empress commands her to sing she starts choking young young but she had already made up her mind not to sing for a woman who denies her son's existence the Empress demands to know who put the egg in her stomach or else young young will be abandoned young young wonders if it meant being a sinner she wonders if in that case she won't be able to meet he on young her vision blurs and everything turns dark when she opens her eyes she imagines he on young's glowing face and raises her hand toward the sky they had decided to go hunting together right there wishes down and release lanterns into the sky suddenly her hand droops and she lies motionless the guards notice this and wonder if she has died a couple of days later the crown prince are asks about the goblin the servant informs him that he fainted after hearing the news he then went off to the cliff of the sinners to find the body of his wife looking through the corpses one by one meanwhile Hyun Young continues frantically searching for Young Young's body his servants inform him that a landslide is coming soon but he doesn't budge not wanting to leave her to rot with the sinners forever as she will never find peace if that happens he cries wondering if it might h. Ah they hurt the one who doesn't even know what resentment is she was just his beautiful flower like bride his body feels heavy from resentment not wanting young young to ever leave him everything turns dark when he wakes up he finds Sawyer by his side he asks why the Empress killed her to which she tells him the whole story he knew already about the Empress's curiosity about who put the goblin egg in her stomach he wonders why young young lost her life over something as small as his existence he mumbles that he's really a terrible husband unable to protect her the scene shifts to him mumbling to his deceased wife to go slowly toward the underworld as her legs are weak he crushes the mask realizing he never owned anything from the beginning for all 30 years of his life she was the only thing he had he reveals his face to the guards and asks if he cut all their necks finally understanding he doesn't need a mask as he's already a goblin and now no eyes in the world will matter when he doesn't have his young young he orders the guard not to kill people unnecessarily as his queen doesn't have good eyes she can't be blinded by the lights they had gathered enough blood to light up her path to the underworld high on young enters the crown prince's bedchamber and finds his wife sitting injured on the side of the bed he remembers how the crown prince abused her verbally and physically when they slept together he made her walk around naked to shame her and he even made crass jokes about how he'd put him and her together so it wasn't news to the crown princess that he and the prince were twins he informs the princess that he will become the crown prince after tonight and drapes a rope over the princess he agrees to help her leave the palace and be free from this harsh world or to become an accomplice to her brother-in-law's treason he says she will remain empress in the future but will spend all her nights alone until the day she dies she says she just has one condition and that is for the current prince to 
never come back and then S.H.E. will agree to become the crown princess Hyun Young then orders General Ju to fill up the poisoned water the next day the Empress wonders why the crown prince has changed so much she knows he's her real child she immediately recognizes him as he on Young and wonders what he's doing in her child's clothes before she could say anything he on Young tapped behind her neck making her unable to talk he then informs her that her son has become a fish and will be raised by him in an aquarium and as for her a marionette could suit her fate meanwhile Young regains consciousness she wonders where she is and finds Yoon beside her who tells her it's Song's residence Young Young hesitatingly asks if she can no longer see he on Young agrees making her sulk more she refuses to eat saying she's fine with dying now her mother had asked her not to die and get revenge for her in the end she was unable to grant her wish and no longer cares if she will die she is only happy while sleeping as he on Young is always in her dreams she wanted to see him just one more time Yoon's spies informed her that he was fine but it made no sense to her that he was fine even after losing his dear wife she enters the crown prince's chambers and realizes it wasn't him but he on young she asks how he could do something so deplorable he tells her that his bride was killed which she will not understand as he tells her what he did with the crown prince and the empress she becomes shocked it wasn't the he on young she knew he has finally become a goblin who laughs while talking about his crimes Yoon bows to him and pleads to let the Empress go in return for her head she has always found the Empress to be a sister however he refuses Yoon asks if if the Empress were to bring Young Young he would comply her Ian Jong pauses and grabs Yoon by the throat saying it was her who stole his bride she tells him his bride's alive causing him to freeze in shock meanwhile Young was asleep she wakes up to the sound of Hyun Young calling her but she remembers that he never wants to see her again but she sees him and says she can now die in bliss this shocks he on young and he apologizes profusely she shakes her head saying it's just a dream as Yoon told her she can't meet him ever again he asks why she agreed to this saying he just needs his bride she hugs him apologizing for hurting him if he cries again after she dies she's sorry for it too he on young tearfully confesses that he's scared that it's just a dream and when he opens his eyes she will be buried in the valley but young young already knows it's a dream that will pass when the night passes he will then disappear and she's going to die as living without him was too sick and painful when she opened her eyes the next morning she found he on young tears fill her eyes knowing she can die peacefully now she starts hitting him asking why he left her there and did not come she confesses she was scared and it hurt like hell he on young hugs her saying he was wrong he promises to be there for her tomorrow the day after tomorrow and forever she truly loves him so much even if she meets him again she wishes for them to never separate again and instead die at this moment he on young confesses he loves her and she also says she loves him too he on young dreams of how he lost young young again and again young young soon wakes him up by singing a song she then asks if he had a bad dream again he asks if it's a song that grants wishes she says she doesn't know if her song grants anything she then asks if he has a wish and should sing a song for him he smiles saying his wish already came true and she just granted it it was in the morning that his sweet and lovely wish came true with this the memoir ends let us know what you thought about the story tell us in the comments section if you would like more such content